classes of protein tertiary structure. The second class of protein tertiary structure are the fibrous proteins. Fibrous proteins consist of elongated polypeptide chains that run parallel to one another and are specialized by cross linkages. In humans, their main role is to provide structure and support and aid in biomechanics. They are not found in differentiated plants. The most commonly found fibrous proteins and the proteins overall is collagen, which accounts for about 30% or more of the total protein in the body. The basic structure of all collagen is a triple helix. However, collagen can be grouped into at least 16 types based on the three-dimensional structure formed at points where the helix is interrupted. Collagen and elastin are examples of common well-characterized fibrous proteins of the extracellular matrix that serve structural function in the body. For example, collagen and elastin are found in components of the skin, connective tissue, blood vessels, blood vessel walls, and sclera and cornea of the eye. Each fibrous protein exhibits special mechanical properties resulting from its unique structure, which are obtained by combining specific amino acids in regular secondary structural elements. This is in contrast to globular proteins with whose shapes are the result of complex interactions between the secondary, tertiary, and sometimes quaternary structural elements. In Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. As you can see in this figure, a typical collagen molecule is long, rigid, and it has three polypeptide chains, which are referred to as alpha chains. These chains are wound around one another in a rope-like triple helix, as you can see in this figure. Although collagen molecules are found throughout the body, their types and organization are dictated by the structural role collagen play in a particular organ. In some tissues, collagen may be dispersed as a gel that gives support to the structure, as in the extracellular matrix or the vitreous humor of the eye. In other tissues, collagen may be bundled up in tight parallel fibers that provide great strength, as in the case of tendons. In the cornea of the eye, collagen is stacked so as to transmit light with the minimum of scattering. Collagen of bones occur as fibers arranged at an angle to each other so as to resist mechanical shear from any direction. Types of Collagen The collagen superfamily of protein includes more than 25 collagen types, as well as additional proteins that have collagen-like domains. The three polypeptide alpha chains are held together by hydrogen bond between the chains. Variations in the amino acid sequence of the alpha chains result in structural components that are about the same size, approximately 1000 amino acid long, but with slightly different properties. These alpha chains are combined to form various types of collagen found in the tissue. For example, the most common collagen type 1 contains two chains called alpha 1 and one chain called alpha 2, whereas type 2 collagen contains three alpha chains, alpha 1 and 3. The collagen can be organized into three groups based on their location and function in the body. Kindly refer to the table on the right side of the slide to look at different types of collagens. There are three main types of collagens. The fibril forming collagens, the network forming collagens and the fibril associated collagens. The fibril forming collagens. These collagens include type 1, 2, and 3. They are fibrillar collagens and have the rope-like structure described earlier for a typical collagen molecule. Type 1 collagen fibers are found in supporting elements of high tensile strength, for example in tendons and cornea, whereas fibers formed from the type 2 collagen molecules are restricted to cartilaginous structures. The fibers derived from the type 3 collagens are prevalent in more dispensable tissues such as blood vessels. Here in this figure, there is an electron microscope image of collagen fibrils at the right side. As you can see, they have a characteristic banding pattern reflecting the regularly staggered packing of the individual collagen molecules in the fibril. Now, the network forming collagens and the fibril associated collagens. In the figure A, we have network forming collagens. 
The network forming collagens are the types 4 and 7, which form a three dimensional mesh, like you can see in the figure A. Rather than distinct fibrils, as you can see, type 4 molecules assemble into a sheet or meshwork that constitute a major part of the basement membranes. While in the case of fibril associated collagens, you can see within the red circle, fibril associated, coll associated collagens are type 9 and 12. They bind to the surface of collagen fibrils, linking these fibrils to one another and to the other component in the extracellular matrix. Structure of the collagen When we look at the amino acid sequence of the collagen, we see that it is rich in proline and glycine amino acids, both of which are important in the formation of the triple standard helix. Proline molecule or proline amino acid facilitates the formation of the helical conformation of each alpha chain because its ring structure causes kinks in the peptide chain. Glycine, the smallest amino acid, is found in every third position from the polypeptide chain. It fits into the restricted spaces where the three chains of the alpha helix come together. As you can see in the figure A, the glycine residues are part of repeating sequence glycine X, Y, where X is frequently a proline molecule and Y is often a hydroxyproline, but can be hydroxylysine as well, as you can see in figure A. Thus, most of the alpha chains can be regarded as polytripeptides, whose sequence can be represented as glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, as you can see in the figure A. With respect to the triple helical structure, unlike most globular proteins, they are folded into compact structures. Collagen, a fibrous protein, has an elongated triple helical structure that places many of its amino acid side chains on the surface of the triple helical molecule. This allows bond formation between the exposed side chains of the neighboring collagen monomers, resulting in their aggregation into long fibers. Collagen contain hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine, which are not present in most other proteins. As you can see in the figure B, these residues result from the hydroxylation of some of the proline and lysine residues after their incorporation into a polypeptide chain. The hydroxylation is thus an example of post-translational modification. Hydroxyproline is an important in stabilizing the triple helical structure of the collagen because it maximizes interchain hydrogen bond formation, the hydrogen bond between the chains. Glycosylation The hydroxyl group of the hydroxylysine residue of collagen may be enzymatically glycosylated. Most commonly, glucose and galactose are sequentially added to the polypeptide chain prior to the triple helix formation, as you can see in the figure C in step 4.